There are adults who enjoy kids' colouring books. And there are adults who enjoy corrupting kids' colouring books. So I've wanted to try this trend for a while, but some of these types of images, they're just not my thing. So I'm starting a new trend and we're doing it in reverse. We're uncorrupting a colouring book, which means instead of my usual Disney princesses, I need to find something a little darker. I'm looking for a Disney villain who's ready for a princess style glow up, a friendly makeover and maybe a chance at redemption through colouring. Oh, these are intense. <laughs> what is this? Oh dear, look at the clouds. There's like clouds inside clouds. <laughs> For an official Disney book, I've... Oh, oh. I don't know how I feel about this book. Oh, I'm a bit disappointed. Oh, look at this. Oh, that's a bit... What is going on in this picture? How do you even colour that? The covers look so good. I was so excited and now I'm not at all. Oh. I was really hoping to find artwork here that is more like the kids colouring books I've found in the past with simple lines seen in the background and none of these messy patterns or special effects that have been added later. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts about whether these make a colouring book more or less appealing to you because I am not a fan. That's I think that's what bothers me about these patterns. If you're going to do patterns, they need to be like shaped around the fabric. These are not shaped around the fabric and so therefore the patterns now become, they're just in the way. I don't know how I'm gonna turn any of these into nice, nice pages though. <laughs> what have I committed to today? Okay, I don't like the black and I don't like the background, but I think I can work with this. So I've got some tracing paper to draft up some initial ideas and see how we can transform Ursula from villain into something nicer. <laughs> the easiest way to do this challenge would be to scan or photocopy this page and do this digitally. But there's something about the extra challenge of doing this all in the original book that excites me. And so that is my goal for today. I'd like to keep as much of the original artwork as possible. So I'm going to try to use the curves of her tentacles to create a flowing dress. I've softened some of her facial features, given her some frills on her dress, and I'm thinking about maybe giving her sleeves or changing her dress to be more like something that a Disney princess would wear. And the final question, what is she going to hold? Balloons? Candy? Because that's not suspicious at all. Maybe flowers. Flowers seem safe and innocent. It's time to jump in and the very first thing I want to do is remove all the black. Even without changing the rest of this page, I'd much prefer a big white open space that I can colour and create my own pans and textures if I wanted to. I'm removing the bags from under her eyes and these heavy frown lines because being a villain has taken its toll, so it's time for a makeover. I'm trying to do most of this in a light layer to reduce the warping of the paper, so I'll come back with a second coat of white when it dries. In fact, you might be wondering what I am using here because I have tried covering the black lines a few times in the past and I have failed a few times in the past, but I finally figured out that most acrylic paint pens should work for this, except that they interact differently with the markers and the pencils on top but I do have a fix for this in a moment I think it's time to add some new details with a black fine liner slightly softer features a new dress and a new hairstyle that's a little less pointy the easiest way to make all of these villains seem nicer is definitely just to soften their facial features it's a pretty bad stereotype that pointy equals villain and soft equals safe and I think a few newer movies are breaking the mold a little bit on this one, but since I am limited to cosmetic changes here and can't perform heart surgery on our villain, I'm going to lean into the stereotypes and put Ursula in a pretty dress with flowers. Whether she's secretly still a villain or is truly redeemable, I'll leave that up to you to decide. Life's full of tough choices in it. I've been using the circles from Ursula's tentacles as the center of the new flowers that I'm drawing. Again, trying to keep elements from the original coloring page when I can. Although I've come across a problem. My black pens keep running out and I think it's the white acrylic that is damaging them. I don't know if this is normal or if I should have given the white more time to dry. 
either way, it's been frustrating enough that I've decided to finish up the changes here. Now for my secret weapon, the world's best transparent acrylic gesso. The last time I used gesso, I used a textured gesso and I didn't really like the results. So I've since bought a normal gesso and this higher quality transparent gesso. And I've been testing these out with the acrylic paint pens and I think applying the clear gesso over the entire page will make sure my markers and pencils look the same in the areas where I've used the acrylic paint pens and on the rest of the page. The added bonus is that it will stop the alcohol markers from bleeding through to the back of the page. But this is still the first time I've tried this on a whole page, so we'll see how we go. After leaving the gesso to dry under some books to keep it from buckling, I'm ready to start colouring. I'm wanting a colour scheme that feels bright, fun and friendly, so I've found some cards in the colour cube that have a warm summer and spring vibe to them, and I'm leaning towards the warm yellows. I also want to include a purple because, well, Ursula is purple. And colouring fabric is another thing that I don't feel super confident about. So the way I approach anything new like this is to just start with the easiest areas first. As I shade more of the obvious areas, it gets easier to see the shape of the rest of the fabric. And I just keep going, hoping that the dress will kind of figure itself out as I go, or that I'll figure it out as I go. And I'm mostly happy, although this front area is looking a little bit strange right now and I'm not really sure how to make this work yet. I'm finding that the pencils are not able to build up as many layers as I'd hoped. When I press harder, they are rubbing off some of the layers underneath and creating a texture rather than adding more pigment. And I'm not sure I like how this is turning out. So I've decided to leave this here for today and I'm going to come back and look at it with fresh eyes tomorrow. I was unsure whether to colour the top of Ursula's dress in a white or in a darker purple. I worry that colouring it too dark will lean into her dark villainous side, but I've gone for it anyway and I'm not sure if I've made the right choice, but there's no turning back now. The pencils are working better today. In fact, much better. I can create more layers, I can burnish a little more, and now I get it. I didn't let the gesso dry enough yesterday. That's why I was having so much trouble with the dress. I don't know if I'll be able to fix the lower dress, but I'll just keep moving forward for now and think about different strategies later. In fact, most of the time, I'm not sure how I'm going to approach each step of this process, but that's what makes this fun. I don't know if I'll end this video with a piece of art or just a whole bunch of new lessons of things that don't work. As I work on the background, I'm definitely noticing an improvement in how the markers perform on the dry gesso too. They are blending more reliably and are easier to use. And I'm also noticing the obvious spots where I have missed some gesso because you can see the marker soak into the page underneath. The marker color is darker on the paper than it is on the gesso and it goes through to the back in any gaps. So next time, I know to give my page a whole day to dry, but also I think I should give it a second coat of gesso to make sure I don't miss any gaps. Other than that, this clear gesso has been a really good option. I have tried some markers over the pencils again, which is something I wouldn't usually do, but I do often use a colorless blender to blend my pencils, so this isn't too different. And it does seem to be helping to fix the strange texture and to improve the dress. All up, I think things are looking good at this point and any mistakes can just be covered with paint pens because when all else fails, just cover it with effects and highlights, right? Is there such a thing as too many dots? I mean, I wasn't planning to make her dress sparkly. It just kind of happened. But every other Disney princess gets a glitter dress now, so Ursula should get one too. I am almost finished Ursula's makeover and I'm resisting the temptation for any fancy lighting with her hair or skin because any big shadows or extreme lighting will lean back into the villainous look so we want to keep things simple and evenly lit. Working in light layers definitely seems to help the pencils blend better on the gesso. I'm trying to avoid too much pressure or hard burnishing 
even though I often do this when coloring. So this is yet another learning experience for me in today's picture. I didn't end up using all the colors from my palettes, but they were a great inspiration to get me started and help me set the tone on this coloring page. Without them, I would have spent much longer deciding on my colors and getting frustrated at the process. There's a link to the color cube in the description below if you'd like to find out more or order one for yourself. So what do you think? Have I successfully uncorrupted this coloring page? Would you trust this Ursula with your children? Shane. No. <laughs> Maybe she's too happy. I don't know if I trust her. <laughs> she's suspiciously happy now. And should I try this again? I really enjoyed this challenge. So if you want to see more from me, here is another video that you can watch next.